Hey there, Brett with Solarola. All right, let's talk battery box. So battery box, among other things like completely changing the rear axle in this vehicle and putting our own controller on the power steering was a real challenge. What I really wanted and what we can get away with on a vehicle of this size is using some steel. And I like steel when it comes to batteries because of the high melting point. So God forbid, should anything ever happen to a battery, and we all know there's that potential, as there is with gas tanks, okay? It's just that we have to pay a lot of attention to safety when it comes to our vehicles. So with a larger vehicle, we can get away with a little bit more steel. And what we've done is we made a system in the E-Star where we are able to put each Tesla module in its own steel box. So that eliminates the possibility if there is a problem with one pack, it has a hard time getting to the rest of the packs. Um, it exits out the bottom, there's a 280 pound plate on top, but getting all of these modules in between the frame rails of the E-Star was a real challenge. And, you know, a thousand, two thousand times measuring, re-measuring, and measuring again, this way, that way, up, down, diagonally, every which way you can imagine. Tape measures, calipers, micrometers, you know, everything that we needed, because we wanted to get as many batteries in the batter, the original battery bay of the E-Star as we could. And I was like, shoot, we can get, you know, three Tesla packs in there, you know, and that's, it's one thing to say stuff, and it's another thing to do stuff. So when it came to doing stuff, it was quite a challenge. And I don't think we were left over with much more than an eighth of an inch. But that's good, because we wanted everything tight. We wanted everything, you know, in a position where it doesn't have the ability to move around a lot. Um, the batteries are secured, of course. There's first foam insulation, and then there's a quarter inch of fire retardant, arc resistant fiberglass and then there's a half an inch of rubber for shock absorption and then more foam on top of that so the batteries can really sit in their position. The batteries are also supported from the top. So they kind of dangle and they're kind of supported. So we wanted to make sure that there was, you know, with bumps and, and all the rigors of driving that the cells, you know, are in a position where they're not getting stressed in any way. So that, it's all a challenge. It's all a big challenge. It's this kind of stuff that keeps me up at night that tries really hard to occupy my meditation time, but this is what we do. All right, we are welding in our battery compartments. So each pair of Model 3 modules goes in its own steel compartment. So here we got the outside. We obviously have to kind of make room here for the motor, so there's gonna be a plate in here in front. There'll be eight modules where I'm standing, and then the longer modules go along the side here We'll have a little extra space in the front for some um, some terminals, liquid cooling radiators, and um, a little cooling radiator for the for the gearbox and possibly some other components. But yeah, just getting this welded up. Once this is welded up, do a little bit of painting, and we're gonna test our batteries and get them in. It's a beautiful day in Wisconsin. We're up in northern Wisconsin, February, early February. The sun's hitting our 12 kilowatts of solar right now, putting out 11, real nice, so we're off grid. And we're working on our build for Redfoo. We are preparing our Model 3 modules. So we have 12 modules, and we've had to do considerable modifications to these modules to make them into something that's um, more user-friendly, I guess, to use in an EV conversion. So one of the big things is we had to take this large terminal off, which normally came up here. That came off. A copper bar went on the back side where I was able to bolt to each of the terminals coming out and create a kind of a bus there. Um, so that neatened things up really nice there. And the next thing is there was normally a ribbon which ran the entire length of the module um, which held the BMS connections so it was able to look at every um, pack of 40 cells in parallel. We had to replace that with a ribbon of 22 gauge wire simply because that ribbon was aluminum it was hard to solder to and a little bit uh, weak and in my opinion susceptible to damage with all that we're going to be doing here. So our first step with these is to remove the existing battery um, BMS system and wires. So these wires here connect to the ribbon strip that goes along to the different um, packs. So 
very, very carefully. I'm going to be pulling these wires off with tweezers, being very careful not to cross any. You can see that some of these have already been kind of bent in transport. So this, this method you know, is not the most robust and partly why we are going to be putting our own in. So we put in some pretty robust um, 22 gauge wires, as I mentioned. They are spot welded to each cell. There are cells revealed from each pack, which was convenient for us. And again, spot welded and that nickel strip soldered to the wire. So that gave us the ability to, um, as you see here, come out the end with the wires that we'll be connecting to our dilithium BMS. All right, here's our last two modules. These things are at least 200 pounds, and it's quite a job for two persons. Um, plus, you know, you're carrying around a battery that you just really don't want to drop. So you add a little bit of stress to it like that, and it's, it's quite a deal shuffling all these modules around. I don't know how Kira does it. I can barely do it. So we're ready to put one in. It's been a long time coming, incredible amounts of preparation. You'll see if you look at the battery box. So pretty exciting day for us. Center it, here we go. Touchdown. Holy God. Any words of wisdom, Dad? That's a lot of batteries. Yeah, slow and steady. Inch by inch, anything's a cinch. As my grandma used to say, check it out, the batteries are in. Motor's in, the controller's in. I have driven the vehicle on a little donor battery, little 48 volt donor battery just around the shop. But now the real deal's in there. To over 200 kilowatt hours of 2170 cells, Panasonic's. So the battery box, once again, was an incredible challenge. But with any challenge like that, it just feels all the much better when you're done, when you accomplish something like that. And we had Hobie here um, helping us put the batteries in and they all just went in just like a glove. So it was really exciting. We got the, the battery uh, cap on right now. I call it the hood because I'm making it so that you can lift it up and inspect and make sure everything's happy, um, you know, periodically with the vehicle. And that's how this vehicle is designed. So pretty exciting vehicle. It's a vehicle that really there's, will last forever. Right? So we have a big enough battery pack in there, so if we don't go all the way to full, and we don't go all the way to empty, and we work kind of the center of that battery pack, the lifetime of that battery pack is gonna go up exponentially. So we know that 
along with solar panels, which will last you 30 years before they start to you know, diminish in their performance, which is a crazy amount of time, the batteries are coming up to speed too. And set up correctly, the batteries can last you a long time. So we're talking about a vehicle that charges itself that can theoretically last for 25, 30 years. It's crazy. But should your battery pack start to sag, maybe you just want to get a little bit more range back, it's easy to change them, right? If you look at the pictures of the battery pack, you'll see the yellow um, nylon straps in there. There's a simple way to pick up each module and bring it out and put a new one in. So that's what's different about our vehicles. They're really made for people, I like to call them sailboats, because as in a sailboat, you want to be a sailor. You know, it's not like you go and there's a lot of sailboats and you walk around and you pick out the color you like. If you're going to sail a sailboat, you're a serious sailor. You understand that there's, there's wind. You understand that there's waves. You understand how your system works because if you don't in your way out there. So I love building these vehicles for people that have the, at least the desire to understand their vehicle more, who are willing to look at your display. Because unlike a production vehicle, it just has a little bar for how much you know, energy you have in there. On the AEM display in Red Foods E-Star, you will be able to see the temperatures of your batteries. You'll be able to see the temperature of your gearbox. You'll be able to see the temperature of your motor. You'll be able to see each individual cell voltage in your pack. So the ability to be hands-on, to really help your vehicle to last as long as it possibly can, and to be safe. It's all right there. And that's what we're doing at Solar Roll Up. We really want to put the vehicle in the hands of the sailor and let them charge by the sun and let them, you know, take the time to treat their battery pack, you know, as, as, as well as possible. So it lasts as long as possible. With all of this politics that seems to be coming into play with the charging stations and that, here's a way to say, okay, let's let that happen. We can always add a CCS charger, a Chatamo charger, the Tesla charger, whatever it is. In the meantime, we're camping, we're charging off the sun, and that is going to be always there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the road.